Master modes are essential and good as a concept for the product as a whole. That doesn't mean it is perfect. It hasn't been perfect. But it was better at one point. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. So let's examine some of the common talking points people parrot to disparage the system. And I assure you, most of the people parroting these talking points didn't come up with them on their own. But before I begin, I want to stress that this video and its talking points are aimed purely at the team fight elements of the game. None of what I am saying pertains in any way, shape, or form to 1v1 duels, which is one of the issues Master Mose aims to address. I also strongly recommend that you head over to Virgil's channel and watch his reaction videos regarding prominent videos related to the subject of Master Mose. His insight is quite valuable and worth listening to. I'll include the link in the description below. This is the most common complaint you will encounter and why I want to address it first. It comes in two parts. The first part is from a gameplay standpoint. Players will say, the speeds are fine and live, it feels so much better. But they are, of course, wrong and are instead parroting talking points from their favorite influencers. The reality is that with the current speeds in PU, you are unable to get into any real fights. No battle is a commitment. No combat can happen unless both sides agree not to disengage into quantum. No proper team fights can happen. There is simply too much speed. So, if you want to have a fight in the PU, you'd have to come to some weird gentlemanly agreement that you would all stay at SCM and fight to the death. Now, how stupid does that sound? If you have an above room temperature IQ, you may realize by now that that isn't how the game works. The second thing that they say is that it feels like you're moving too slowly and things should be faster, that it isn't realistic, and that space has no drag, among various things. And some of it is true. You could, in theory, move a lot faster in space. You would also not feel or experience drag. So where do these people propose the speed ends? The space shuttle in 1981 could go as fast as 17,500 miles per hour, or in Star Citizen terms, 7,822 meters a second. Surely something in the Star Citizen universe could go much faster, right? It could, and I have two answers to that argument. The first is, so what? Who cares? What does it matter? The second and more polite answer is that CIG has always written down and provided in-universe lore reasons for this limitation. All the way back in 2018, John Pritchett, former senior physics programmer for CIG, made a thread linking to a document he wrote that explains the Intelligent Flight Control System, or IFCS, to the players and its in-universe role. In particular, one part on page 8 is most interesting and very relevant to this. Let me read it off to you. Speed Regulation Because IFCS imposes an artificial limit on the linear velocity of a ship, the speed regulation subsystem will use a limited amount of thrust to generate a corrective deacceleration whenever the ship is exceeding the speed cap for any reason. He also made a mention about atmospheric flight and why it is slower. He writes, Every ship has a velocity at which drag forces become too extreme for the structure of the vehicle to withstand. This is most problematic for ships that are designed primarily for space flight where structure is not engineered to withstand the strain of atmospheric forces. It is also worth noting that on page 5 he mentions acceleration, and how if it is too high, it causes stiff and unnatural movements, something we are experiencing in 3.22.1. He writes, If we would allow our ships to switch between zero and maximum acceleration instantaneously, the motion of our ships would be extremely stiff and unnatural. Therefore, we place a limit on how quickly acceleration can change, and this limit is called jerk. Case closed, end of story. CIG can make the speeds whatever they want, 
and they have an in-universal lore reason to explain it away. The IFSC imposes an artificial limit on speed and acceleration to prevent damage to the ship and its components, as well as prevent harm from coming to the human body due to the Gs. The SCM nav switch interacts with the IFSC, and the system then reroutes power to the system necessary to achieve maximum safe speeds that both the pilot and ship can handle. If that answer isn't good enough for you, here's another one. The servers simply cannot handle high speeds, especially for a game that is going to feature a lot of PvP in an MMO environment. If you have been playing SC for any amount of time, you know just how bad the desync can get in PvP when two or more players are in the same area doing battle. No matter the size of the battle, the server simply cannot keep up with the speeds of the legacy flight model. Some claim that Master Modes is too easy and that ease will cause players to hit a skill ceiling too quickly and eventually get bored. I disagree. Master Modes is absolutely easier than the Legacy Flight Model and is much more accessible for players. But it is far from easy. I, myself, will never become an ace fighter pilot. It doesn't interest me. The big ships do. But I feel like if I wanted to learn and improve, I absolutely could become an ace with this new system. And that means the system is working. People are not going to hit a wall and decide that they no longer have anything left to learn and get bored. Not at all. I'd argue though, that the hook of Star Citizen shouldn't just be mastering the flight model, but rather everything else that makes Star Citizen the MMO game it is trying to be. Multiple roles, professions, organizations, politics, competition, a living, breathing world. That is going to be the major hook. Not being the master of a flight model and arena commander. People who make this argument are trying to appeal to the concern of longevity, but don't factor in what truly garners longevity in an MMO. I could promise you people haven't been playing EVE for over 20 years now because it has an amazing detailed and highly engaging flight model. You see this one a lot. People will say that the archetype system that Master Modes are promoting will change or force players to play a certain way, that it will prevent players in an Aurora from killing an arrow. Again, so what? What makes you think that you have any business having a respectable chance of killing a dedicated light fighter in a starter ship? Would the same people who gripe about this extend the same courtesy to the Vulture or the Prospector? Do the self-proclaimed PvP elite think that an industrial ship should be a credible threat to their light fighter? Of course not. The same way I do not expect to have a chance against an opponent armed with a rifle when I only have a knife. I do not expect a certain class of ship to be able to credibly threaten another. Ships need character. Ships need roles. Ships need playstyles. It blows my mind that people in the SC community can have such unrealistic game design expectations when other games, such as World of Tanks or World of Warships, manage to give each ship class and individual ship within that class a distinct role and identity. Do you not think it would be better for gameplay if every ship in this game, of which there are well over 200 by now, had a style to play or role to fulfill? Some people in this community really need to get their ego in check and think about the bigger picture and try to, for once, consider anything and everything else but themselves. This is a game being made to appeal to many. And not everyone is going to want to fly the Gladys for another 10 years. They have their favorite ships, their favorite designs, and their favorite roles. And they want to not only be viable, but also essential. So, what isn't a DPS race at its core? If I turn a corner and come face to face with an opponent in Star Marine, my objective is to damage him faster than he could damage me. Is that a DPS race? How about when I'm going toe to toe with another constellation in AC and we're trading blows? Is that not also a DPS race? 
To use this term is an appeal to emotion, and we'll cover that in more detail next. But it is being used to misrepresent the argument. People just say it without understanding it. So let me explain it to you, and to the people who use it, so we can all understand. The reason why people are calling things a DPS race now is because of the auto-aim of the weapons. Not the speed, not master modes, or anything else, but the auto-aim. It is too easy to aim. And that is true. I truly believe it to be true. I'd like to clarify that it is too hard to hit, which is ironic, but I already covered that topic in my previous video. But it is also a result of a game where combat happens in space, where two ships have shields, hull HP, and depleting those two things is required to win the race. That's it. You don't have a DPS race in War Thunder because one burst from a gun is usually enough to destroy your opponent. That isn't the case in a game like Star Citizen. The DPS race, as they call it, has always been present and will always be present due to the nature of the game's setting and design. Perhaps armor will fix it? Maybe? At least for the bigger ships. But as long as the end goal is to shoot your enemy's ship until it is destroyed, that will always be the case. The longer the time to kill, the more of a DPS race things become. In MMORPG raids, you used to have a hit chance to help mitigate that and prolong the race. In FPS games, you have accuracy to control and cover to utilize. In Star Citizen Flight Combat, at least for light fighters, it has always been a DPS race. And the only thing that was mitigating it before was absurd combat speeds and obnoxious abuse of mechanics to manipulate the pip in such a way that made accurate fire difficult. That wasn't fun, nor was it a good system to design and build around. There really is no magic solution either. If you made ships explode very quickly, you'd have a game of who shoots first. If you have a game where weak spots are the only way to do damage, then it becomes a game of who moves the fastest. But for all the gripes and complaints about the current master mode being a DPS race, I would take that over any of the aforementioned alternatives. Lately, you may have noticed this tactic being used quite a bit, with some individuals referring to SC as an arcade game now, or even comparing it to mobile phone games. The reason people say this is because they want to evoke an emotion from you. They lack a real argument, unable to back it with logical reasoning. They cannot logically explain why they have chosen those words, but they use them because they want you to view the changes coming as an oversimplification or trivialization of the product. Master Modes is certainly a change, and a very big one but it isn't being done to turn this game into, say, Starfield. It isn't even remotely close to that, nor is it even close to Elite Dangerous. It is still uniquely Star Citizen, and that has not changed. No matter what people are trying to get you to believe, you still have six degrees of freedom, you still have seamless transitions between space and atmospheric combat, and you still have all of the fidelity, glitz, and glamour that you have come to expect from CIG. It's just all being presented to you in a different way. I'm growing weary of people using the word accessible as a pejorative. It doesn't imply dumbing something down to reader rabbit levels, which, by the way, I think some of the people in my comments could benefit from playing. Rather, it means opening up access to a part of the game which players previously thought was locked off to them due to the prohibitively high barrier of entry. Star Citizen is already a game which requires a prohibitive amount of time to really play and get into. Adding on the expectation for players to quote-unquote train and quote-unquote practice in a completely separate minigame outside of the PU and hopefully someday MMO, is unrealistic and unappealing. This isn't the early 2000s anymore. People have a myriad of games to play 
at any time. They have options. If Star Citizen is asking too much in terms of time for practice outside of the real game, they're just going to go play something else. And you may say, well, they don't have to train. But the reality is that they do. That is what AC is for. AC has created an environment that almost demands that players use it to train and hone their skills for the real thing. And this keeps them out of the real thing and in training. Sooner or later, that reality is going to hit them. And they're either going to stop and accept their fate within the PU or go do something else with their time. This is why the system must not require a training regime to be competent at. That is the key word here, by the way. Competent. Not expert. Not pro. Not the best. Competent. I've always found the notion of training for a computer game ridiculous. I've never spent time in aim labs or whatever other consumer-driven software marketed at making me better at games that people peddle now. I've just played them. Ideally, players will just play the MMO portion of Star Citizen and get better at it. What MMO do you know of where people train in a separate minigame to do the content they prefer? Do target dummies and RPGs count? Does running the same static, never-changing scripted PvE dungeon count? What requires it? This is a genuine question. When I played Planicide, Dark Age of Camelot, or even Garbage WoW arenas and RPGs, I never trained for them. I just played the game. It was organic and fun. Sitting in AC all day to train for the real thing has put me in an endless loop of training. I think if you've seen me in Star Marine, you can attest that I'm not too bad at it. I promise you I'd rather have that FPS combat experience in the PU, not the Star Marine minigame. And that is why I'm telling you accessibility is important for this product. Because if I, a sweaty in my own right, don't enjoy it, Joe Casual, of which there are far more than me, isn't going to enjoy it either. I want Life Fighters to remain a viable playstyle, but it just doesn't suit me. However, the reason some people advocate for the bigger is better argument is because for the first time in a while, they have a chance of being engaged and destroyed. Unfortunately, this isn't the case for ships like the Hammerhead or its turrets, or any turrets for that matter. They're lacking. But ships like the Connie and Vanguard are fully capable of delivering a blow if they make a mistake. And why is that an issue again? It's difficult for me to sympathize with light fighter players when they've been the sole option for so long. But believe it or not, I want them to enjoy the game too. I want them to be integrated into the bigger picture, but not at the expense of larger and yes, more effective ships. Please explain to me why you, a pilot and a light fighter, should be able to take down a fully crewed constellation? Why? Through skill? Do you genuinely believe that crewing and operating those ships don't require skill? Let me tell you, dealing with the atrocious UI, ineffective turrets, and the Gladius' insane strafe speeds, that demands a considerable amount of skill just to take out one of you. I've come across numerous posts where players audaciously suggest that multi-crew ships are currently in good condition. They often cite the effectiveness of the Constellation and Master Modes as evidence. Is the Kani effective? Absolutely. If you recklessly fly directly in front of its guns, otherwise, it's constantly flanked and ultimately destroyed. And that's acceptable. Yes, that's acceptable. A Kani without gunners should undoubtedly be vulnerable to a smaller ship sneaking up behind it and taking it out. My concern arises when crewed. The turrets struggle to effectively target the fighters harassing it. Thus, it becomes more practical to bring two additional Connies to cover each other instead of having two gunners. That's not what I want to see from these ships. I want to see teamwork encouraged and rewarded, with players having an incentive to man these turrets, not just bring more ships and fly them solo. I view players flying Connies solo in the same light as individuals taking tanks and squad and operating them alone. That's imprudent. I'm not suggesting you should be obligated to have a crew. 
But if light fighter pilots are reckless enough to fly in front of the Connie and end up as wreckage, that's on them, and not indicative of Baltic cruise ships being in good condition. I've said it before, and I'll reiterate, we need to promote and reward players for utilizing these larger ships. Now, let's consider if you crew those ships. What kind of player believes that they, as a light fighter, should ever pose a threat to a larger class of ship? A delusional one. Someone so self-absorbed in their perceived greatness that they can't comprehend being outmatched by something else. Not every light fighter pilot fits this description, and many of the exceptional pilots I've conversed with on Discord over the past few days, particularly one who knows their identity, understand that this isn't directed at them. However, there's a small yet vocal group of players who vehemently oppose the idea that anything other than a light fighter should be a viable option in any PvP encounter. I've always been in favor of master modes and still am. As per my previous video, version 3.22.1 really misses the mark and brings back many problems the Legacy Flight model had. Speed is always a point of contention, but throughout Star Citizen's history, speed was never as high as it was prior to master modes. And I truly believe the speeds they have now in 3.22.1 are mostly fine. Acceleration and strafe are likely the culprits for many of the problems we are seeing, and I would like to see them considered. Accessibility is one of the core goals of Master Modes, and anyone who thinks otherwise is misguided and not worth listening to. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I would really like all of you to get in there and try out Master Modes.